I'd like to introduce you to a fine gentleman. I believe it's the first time that this man has been in Cajun country. And I've known him for a short time, yet the relationship that I've had with this man has been one that I, I really enjoyed. And I look forward to this relationship enduring for years to come. And I'm pleased to present to you tonight the president of Calvary Records. Would you welcome to Lafayette, Louisiana, Dr. Nelson Parkinson. Thank you, Barry. It's indeed a privilege to be with you tonight in this great city of Lafayette, Louisiana. I'd like to express my appreciation to Barry Thompson and all the folks at Cajun Radio for the tremendous job they've done in putting this concert program together tonight. Many of you have come hundreds of miles to hear this group sing for you tonight. The Hensons have never been known as the first family of gospel music, but that's only because there have been others before them. However, they could be called the greatest group that ever walked on stage. Everywhere you go, all over the world, the excitement in gospel music is at an all-time high. This group that you've come to see and hear tonight is in the forefront of this Christian music explosion. Someone told me a while ago they were so excited, they were sitting on the edge of their chair and they hadn't even got out of their car. But now every car is empty, this place is packed, and it's just about time. So ladies and gentlemen, take just a couple of minutes and look above you. For what you see is a roof. It isn't going to be there very long, so get a good look at it. For there's someone waiting in the wings. All they brought with them is the spirit and their songs. But that's all they need to lift the roof off. They're headed for the center of the stage now. Ladies and gentlemen, from Nashville, Tennessee, the Hensons. Just a game where you lose everything Yeah, but some got it all in the bag Hey, I've heard when you're born You start dying that day And they fear that the next grave's their own I can't worry about pushing up daisies that way Oh, something keeps pulling me home Who's gonna win when you cry? I 
surrender to the enemy and be For be a soldier till the army standing on his feet This rock, I'll build my church, then let old Satan try. But the gates of hell cannot prevail, and here's a reason why. Jesus raised the flag of Calvary, made sweet victory complete. And if we're made of more than conquerors, it saves more than me. And tell me who's going to fight, who's giving the end, who's going to lose, and who's going to win. Would you cry, I surrender to the enemy in me, or be a soldier? soldiers in the army of the Lord. If you are, then I want you to know you're enlisted in the only army that ever won the war before we fought a battle. It's the army, it is the army that are made more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And the part that thrills me, I, I get to singing that song and I hear that part where it says, if we're made more than conquerors, then the devil's more than beat. Amen. He's not just beat, folks, but through Christ Jesus, he's more than beat. Well, they're not listening out there in the tape machine. Wouldn't hurt nobody if somebody shouted a little bit around here tonight, would it? I mean, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to be dignified, you know. Yeah, but it ain't in you. It just ain't in me, is it? So if I get happy and get to shouting just a little bit, don't, don't you worry about it. I, I just, I'm that way all the time. I love Jesus and I love to sing gospel music. How many have ever heard the Hensons in person before? Hold up your hand. How many never have heard us in person before? Hold up your hand. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I hope that we sing a song or say something tonight that might uh, cause you to, to like us just a little bit, not because of the way we look, although I don't look bad, you know, but, but because of the message that we bring. The message that we bring is hope and it's cheer and it's, it's exciting and, and we love uh, talking about and singing about Jesus Christ. I want to take a minute. I want to take a minute, if I may, and introduce the Hensons to you. This young man over on my right is, uh, you see him here on this stage as a bundle of, of talent and a bundle of nerves, a bundle of talent. He's exciting. Uh, he is known all over the country. But really, there's a side to him that you don't see. And that is... <laughs> Nothing special, just another side. <laughs> and, and that is, if you were to see him around our hometown of Hendersonville, Tennessee, you're liable to see him in any... Uh, any kind of car because he not only sings but he you'd, you'd think he was a car lot dealer you know because he, he he's in a different car every time you see him he trades he changes cars like folks would change socks you know it, it more really, often than some people change socks <laughs> I tell you if I ever told the truth this happened the other day I was sitting in the parking lot at the Kroger store in our hometown, and uh, I looked across the parking lot, and coming out the front doors of the store, uh, there was Kenny carrying a great big old bag, you know, and I thought, well, look at there, there's my brother, and I, ha I think I'll just run over and say hi to him, because I haven't seen him since yesterday, <laughs> and, and I jumped out of the car, locked the door, and I scooted off across the parking lot to, to say hi to him, when I got there, he wasn't there. And I noticed when he was standing there, he'd been scratching his head like there was something strange on his mind, you know, or nothing on his mind. 
And, and so finally I located him inside the store and I said, I said, what happened? I said, I was going to say hi to you and when I got where he was at, he was gone. I said, did you forget something like a loaf of bread or something like that? He looked at me and he sc scratched his head and he said, he said, you know what? I said, you ain't going to believe this, but said, I had to go call my wife. He said, find out what kind of car I was in. <laughs> But you know, something you can change his shoes, you can change his shirt, you can change his hairstyle, you can change anything about him. But when he steps up to that microphone to start singing, you're going to know it's unmistakably Kenny Henson. Would you make him welcome? It's Kenny Henson. For three years, for three years, this young man has been traveling with the Henson family. And three years, he has been nominated among the top five baritone singers in gospel music. He is, uh, that's quite an accomplishment for a young 19-year-old. Look at him. I mean, there he stands. How tall are you? That, that's, he's six foot. Uh, he, how much you weigh? He said, ah, he's gaining, though, I'll tell you that. But now you see him singing on stage, but if you were to go to, to his hometown, you might see him down at the spa working out, they call it, you know, or, or, or what they call it, pumping iron, you know. And how much can you lift? 250. About t two, 250, 250, 260. You could lift Kenny then, couldn't you? <laughs> But you ain't strong enough to lift Ronnie yet. <laughs> but, but anyhow, you look at him here and all those, all those muscles, and, 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 and I'll tell you where you can see him. In the mall, you see him a lot in the mall, and he just recently got married, and that little lovely bride, you can see her just hanging, hanging, yeah. Believe me, she's saying the same thing. Huh? <laughs> no. You'll see him walking through the mall, you know, and she's just hanging on to him. She's feeling so safe and secure, you know. And I found out something the other day. This hunk of a man, this macho man, that can lift 250 pounds, stand six foot tall. I found out the other night that he sleeps with the lights on. He's afraid of the dark. And I went over to his house at Christmas time, and I was just kind of snooping around, and I leaned up against, he had this little stocking hanging there for him. His wife had bought for him, and she had it all filled with goodies, and I got to looking inside, and you know what was the first thing I brought out? One of them Popeye night lights. I'm telling you, but he's here tonight, to sing his way into your heart. I want you to make him welcome. Our nephew, Eric Henson. Would you make him welcome tonight? I'm fixing to get myself in hot water now, but I gotta tell you, if I ever told the truth, this is the truth. I stepped off the bus the other night, and as I was getting off the bus to go into the auditorium, a fellow yelled out at me, he said, hey, mister. I said, yeah. He said, that's a big old bus y'all got. And I said, yeah, that's a big old bus. He said, y'all have a stove on that bus? And before I could answer him, he said, is that young lady that travels with y'all, does she cook for y'all? And I thought, cook for us? Cook for us? I was raised up with her. I know how she cooks. She can make meatloaf. It glows in the dark. She cooked so good, even the flies chipped in and bought her a screen door. <laughs> we got to be in San Antonio, Texas tomorrow night. Has anybody got a way they could give me a lift? Because I got a feeling she ain't letting me back on that bus. I want you to make her welcome. Mama's pride and joy, I, I'm, I'm 30-something years old, and I'd still get a spanking from Mama if she heard me talking about her daughter that way. You know something? 
This is a live record. She's going to hear me. She's going to hear it, isn't she? You in trouble now? Anyway, make her welcome. My baby sister, Mama's little girl, Yvonne. Yeah. That's her, right there. What's I, wrong, Ron? I got, I got something in my eye. Wait a minute. We got to stop now. Ronnie gets something wrong with his glasses. He can't see the top. <laughs> oh. Now, you can laugh it's if you eye. want to. These are important glasses right here. And they, they ain't only important to this guy. Do you know the government's interested in these things right here? That's right. Did you realize, do you realize, how much money they could save on spy satellites if they could just get a man with these on Don't you say it. strapped to the bottom of a plane. <laughs> Let me look through these things a minute here. <laughs> hey, hey, some pretty people out in this audience. Right the lights are out. Hey, that don't matter if the lights are out. These things are infrared. <laughs> See a man up in the balcony? Yeah, you right up there with the string tie on. Did you know you got a cavity in your boulder right down here? Ronnie, I love you, son, but you blind. You know, he was, this, this is the truth. Now, he, he messed that all up all ago. He was talking about me. I'm going to tell off on him. He is so blind, he was telling you that he was sitting in Kroger's parking lot. Nah, we was at Kmart. <laughs> Listen, we wasn't in the parking lot, neither. We was inside. See, Ronnie has a C&I dog. And he's inside Kmart with this C&I dog, and he had him by the leash, and he was swinging that dog round and round like this right here. Well, the manager must have been an animal lover or something. He came up to Ronnie and said, Boy, what are you doing to that dog? You fixing to kill him? <laughs> Ronnie looked at him as only Ronnie can, and he said, I'm just looking around. <laughs> he may be blind, but he's one of the best songwriters in the business, and I love him. He's my brother. Make him love him. You like him. Rascal, I, I owe you one. Let me do something just real quick. It's my privilege to introduce some of the greatest guys that you'll ever hear play an instrument. Now, when they come with the Henson family, they, as everybody else that has ever been with us, they were told to do one thing. They were told, your job is to make us sound beautiful. <laughs> Hundreds of them have walked away shaking their head. Four of them dared to stay. And it's my privilege to introduce him. I want you to make welcome a young man who is on the piano, who can forevermore tickle those ivories. He's a great guy and he loves God. His name is Rodney LeSean. Make Rodney welcome. <laughs> From over in Dallas, Texas, a young man who plays the bass guitar for the Henson family, Carrie Huckabee. Make Carrie welcome. From Lake City, Florida, the young man who plays the steel guitar is uh, small in stature, but you put a guitar in his hand and he stands 10 foot tall. I want you to make him welcome. His name is Scott Sanders. Make Scott welcome, would you? The young man who plays the drums for the Hensons has been around, I guess, just about as long as there's been a Henson family, and uh, he forevermore knows his way around when it comes to music. A great guy and one of the most talented gentlemen you'll ever meet. Behind the drums, make welcome Tracy Preston Richardson. That's him. If you're glad to see the Henson family and all the band tonight in Lafayette, Louisiana, let them know one more time. All the Henson. I want to do a song for you right now that because of you, this song's been mighty, mighty good to us. Back in 1983, for four months, this song was the number one gospel song of the nation. Go like this. Some lawyers can win And a doctor can heal And your banker can lend Till your pockets are filled but if yours is a case of a sin-stricken soul For the problem you face, there's 
there's only one place to go. your skill. Cause honey, I don't care who you are or what you are, you just can't play them parts. That old man that's gonna deal, fixing to tell you why. Cause mama's old black Bible is already planned. Who that loser is gonna be ain't but two winning hands. That's all. And they were nailed to a tree.
like that song. There's nothing in all of your life, folks, nothing that you'll ever see any more beautiful than to watch somebody who God has been tugging at their heart and to see them with the tears rolling down their cheeks as they get up from their seat and they walk down the aisle of maybe a little church or a big church. Matters not where, matters not where the altar is. Any place is an altar where someone wants to find God. There's nothing you'll see quite like somebody kneeling at that altar and saying, God, my life, let it be your life and let your life be my life. There's nothing you'll see greater than that except one thing, and that is the splendor of heaven itself. Amen. Amen. I love, I love to sing about heaven. These kids' life has been spent singing about heaven. And I might add, well spent, because that's a good thing to sing about. And you know, in heaven, folks, have you ever sit down and just tried to imagine what it's going to be like? Oh, in the farthest of your imagination, when you've gone to the farthest realms of your imagination, you've not begun to scrape the surface of what heaven's really going to be like. No wonder the Bible said, Eyes have not seen, and ears have not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of a man what Jesus has in store for us. But if it's anything like I feel in my spirit right now, standing on this stage, I'm ready to go claim what rightfully belongs to me. Oh, yes. Amen. I know one thing, I know one thing for sure. In heaven, there's not going to be any night. Did you know that? No darkness at all. No night. And Jesus himself is going to be the light. Hey, you, how many of you, hey, you're going to turn this into camp meeting in a minute. Amen. How many
many of you ever read about Enoch in the Bible? You know Enoch, the one that, that the Bible said he was not, and, and the Lord just took him, you know? Can't you just see old Enoch? And it said he walked with the Lord. Can't you just see him walking with the Lord? And he walked with the Lord so long and so far that finally the Lord said, Hey, Enoch, said, you're closer to my house than you are to yours. said, why don't you just come in and spend the day with me? And you know where Enoch is today? He's spending the day because there ain't no night. Amen. Ain't no night in heaven. Not too long ago, I had a dream, the first time that I ever dreamed about heaven in my life. But it was so real. It was so real. Now I want you to listen. It's just my dream. It's my version of what heaven may be like. Any way it is, if Jesus is there, it's heaven. Listen to a brand new song called The Dream. I dreamed I went to a place far away To describe it, I just don't know how In its splendor, I remember how I wanted to stay I even wish I could be there right now I stood in a city without one single shop there was nothing to buy or to sell and everything sparkled but the badge of a cop there's no crime Around the throne of a king, I even found myself bowed at his feet. Does that sound like heaven? Streets of gold, gates of pearl, hills of green. It sure looks like heaven. Beats any. Yeah. 
just love it when the hallelujah meets me again. Well, we're deep and early, going home late, riding on the heavenly wind. Oh, I've got a feeling we're going to be feeling that old time feeling again. Church got cold when the saints of old were no longer around to pray. They lost all of its shout when the fire went out, they just no longer away. The new hearts are turning, old flames are burning, hotter than they've ever been. Oh, I got a feeling we're gonna be feeling that old time feeling again. Oh, I got a feeling we're gonna be feeling that old time feeling again. Oh, the glory of the glory just love it when the hallelujah meets. I just to talk about the weather or to show them all the clothes we wear. From the ceiling to the floor, from the stage to the door, there's revival everywhere. Well, people keep reaching, so we gotta keep preaching, Granny's old fashioned cure for sin. Cheers a good dose of healing when the soul needed healing and that old time feeling within. Oh, I got a feeling we're gonna be feeling that old time feeling again. Oh, the glory of it, the glory just love it when the Halloween meet we get. stir your soul, your spoon's fed out of your bowl. Amen. You know what else? I got a feeling that old time feeling is long overdue. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that every church is like this, but I'm saying that every church ought to be just the opposite. We're living in a time where people have figured this thing out and they've modernized this thing till it's so cut and dry that God, you wonder sometimes if he ain't within 500 miles of the place, you know. And they've got, you get somebody convicted of God and convicted of their sins and they begin to walk down the aisle and it didn't long till an usher or somebody meets them and says, off into this little room we go where we can pray, you know. Then you got preachers that are standing behind that pulpit. They're as dead as a knot on a log and they're standing there like some six foot icicle and all they're doing is blocking a pretty view of the baptistry picture. And you know, I heard on the news or I heard on the, on the radio the other day, somebody was singing a song, said, I sure could use a, a little good news today. Well, I got some good news for you tonight. They're not listening to the right source of information. Jesus is fixing to come and the church is getting ready and people are getting back to old time religion. Amen. Yes, sir. The Bible is sweeping this country. Kenny. I want you to slow it down just a little bit. All right. <laughs> I feel a good dose of Granny's old-fashioned cure for sin and everything else that ails you tonight. Amen. Well, we didn't come together just to talk about the weather. And it's mighty nasty outside tonight, ain't it, though, by the way? Or to show off all these old fancy clothes. That we wear Sears and Rover But it beats that Goodwill suit you used to wear from the, from the ceiling to the floor From this old wooden stage back to the door That's revival How many can feel revival? Yeah. Yeah, shoot that I don't know if some of you know this or not But there's a movement going on nowadays Oh, wait a minute, it's not that kind of movement. This is a movement to keep radio preachers off the radio waves. This is a movement to keep preachers off the television. This is a movement to keep gospel singers out of public buildings like this, singing the gospel. Some of you may not be aware of that. It's up to you and I to stop that from happening. Did you know that? Amen. You know why? Because there's multitudes of people that keep on reaching. 
So we can't neglect to keep on preaching Granny's old-fashioned cure for sin What's your use? Uh -huh. She used the good stuff for kneeling When the soul needed healing And that old-time feeling with this Hey, I got a feeling we're gonna be feeling That old-time feeling again Oh, the glory of it, don't you just love it With the hallelujah beat Sing it again. I'm gonna lock the doors and preach now. Well, we didn't come together just to talk about the weather or to show off all these clothes that we wear. From the ceiling to the floor, from this whole worn out wooden stage back to the door, the stage hand said, Wait a minute, there's revival in the air. Multitudes of people keep on reaching So we can't neglect to keep on preaching <laughs> Granny's old fashioned cure for sin I just love this part She used to go to social media with the soul needed healing And that old time feeling with this Hey, I got a feeling we're gonna be feeling that old time feeling again Oh, the glory of it, don't you just love it when the hallelujah beat me dead Yeah, I'm in it Some old stick in the mud said, well, now, that's carrying it a little bit too far. You ain't seen nothing to how far Jesus is going to carry me one day. <laughs> well, it's just beside me. Why anybody want to do something like that? Well, when it stops getting beside you and it starts getting inside you, you're going to know how we do something like that. Oh, yes, sir. We call this... Old-fashioned praise from the Lord. Now, I know there's some of them, you know, folding their hands saying, that's, that's nonsense. And some of them laughing, some of them calling your names, you know. Nudge somebody next to you and say, you ain't making fun of me, are you? <laughs> if you got a feeling they are, I don't want to start no trouble or nothing, but just look them right in the eye and say, hey, you can call me anything you want to for serving the Lord, but when Jesus calls me, you can call me God. Call me a dreamer, cause I call it mine. Heaven, I don't care. Call me crazy Cause I'm homesick for it Yet I have never been there Call me a stranger Cause that's all I am I know I, I don't belong Call me anything But when he calls me Call me God
for me to hear him call me and call me God. You know, I've been called an awful lot of things in my lifetime, and to be honest with you, smart wasn't often one of them. But thank God I was smart enough one day to call Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. And you know what? I called it quits to a whole lot of sinning. But it's because of that commitment that a lot of people laugh at me and they call me foolish. <laughs> I'll let them go ahead and laugh. That don't bother me at all. Because even a fool can see by the shape she's in that this old world's about to fall. But just as long as I let Jesus call the shots, did you know I got nothing at all to fear? And when that roll is called up yonder, don't you call me because I ain't going to be here. Call me gone. I believe and call me gone. You'll be grieving if you're left here without tears. She was talking about me, Ken. Yeah, I didn't know Mama was here tonight. She's the only one to be saying that, I'm sure. The girl says she loves you, and then you tell her that she's old enough to be my mama. I don't understand. Now, now I got something else to tell that, you. That's old. That's why he knows that's something bad to say. I, I, I got something else to tell you a while ago, and this is it, kind of immaterial. Don't have a whole lot to do with nothing, but, but I got to thinking about... Then that's typical of you, ain't it? I got to thinking about you uh, telling these folks that I mistake Kroger's for, or Kmart for Kroger's. <laughs> and I just, want, I just want you to know something. I may be blind, but it don't matter if it's Kroger's, Alphabeta, uh, Sears and Roebuck, or, uh, or whatever. Sometimes you have to park a mile to walk into the place, but I can just pull right into that handicapped place and get out of my car and go right in. <laughs> Hey, listen, ser serious. How many, how many of you heard about, uh, how many of you heard about uh, that movie that was supposed to come on uh, about the uh, the day after or something? I think that's the way it is. The day after. I never did get to see it, you know. But then you ain't seen a whole lot, have you? I'm, try I'm trying to get serious. Okay, let me get serious now. <laughs> Everybody put your mirrors away out there in the audience. He's trying to get serious. Anyway, the day after. <clears throat> they say that was a frightening thing. But if you're a child of God, you agree with me. I'm not worried about blowing up, folks. I'm thinking about going up. Amen. I took a sneak peek in the back of the book, and I already know how the story is going to end. It's going to end like this. And I know how to stop. 
nations And they seek to write the story once again Oh, they'll fill your mind with lies and imitations And they'll try to make a pretty thing of sin But no matter how they cover up the true facts Before the ink has dried and left their pen My lamp is filled with all my bags and all packed And I already know how the story In case I haven't told you tonight, and I know what your reply would be, I already know it, but I just want you to know of reassurance, Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And it's not the Hensons, folks, but it's Jesus Christ. Praise God. And it is our privilege to lift him up. An elderly woman who had never seen since her birth was asked, if she ever felt terrible, 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 terribly left out because she had never had the privilege to see. And she said, no, no, not at all. Because you see, I know Jesus as my Savior. I am a Christian. And she said, the thing that I cling to and the thing that keeps me going is to know that the first thing I ever see will be his face. You see, she may not have natural sight, but she's not blind. She's not really blind. There's someone a whole lot worse than her, and there's none so blind as he who will not see, if I may coin a phrase. And one time, not so long ago, I sat down and I wrote a song for my little sister to sing. My heart was so troubled for those who once really knew God, and today they walk a distance. And I thought, what about those people? And I want you to listen. A sis comes and sings a song for you, as though she was someone who was blinded from the truth. But she's on her way back. She's returning tonight. And I got a feeling even here tonight, there could be people who have been blinded from the truth as they've listened to the devil. But they're on their way back. They're feeling, they're feeling, they're getting closer. Listen.
ashamed to praise him no no not for one moment I hear her saying that and I remember the time when Kenny when this old four eyed boy was really blind really blind I never had a whole lot of intelligence but thank God I had enough sense one time to hear the preacher say Jesus loves me I don't know if you can remember the time that Jesus saved you or not, but I never will forget it. Oh, I feel his presence tonight. Somebody said, well, I don't feel nothing. Well, that may be because you don't have nothing. But I feel his presence, and it makes me want to say, Lord, I will praise you forever for one precious moment when I felt sin's burdens on me now my eyes with joy cried how could my lips deny it for my heart Testifies it, I'm free. I'm free. Yes, I'm free. So free. Ever free. I'm the Spirit, <laughs> and the Spirit in me. I'm free. So to Calvary Street I'm free I got a feeling there's some folks other than me in this auditorium and other than the Hensons who are free tonight. Now I want you to sing that chorus with me. It's simple, but oh, if ever there was the truth, ever spoken, it's the truth. How many feel free? Glory to his name. I'm free. I am free. I am the Spirit, and the Spirit in me I'm rejoicing because I am not what I was. Thanks to Calvary Street, I am free. Stop all the music, fellas. 
Thank you to our good friend and our brother in the Lord, uh, Brother Barry Thompson. We appreciate him very much. We want to thank Cajun Radio for all the wonderful work that they're doing to keep gospel music alive and well in Cajun country. I mean... Somebody asked me a while ago, where in the world is your little brother? And uh, our little brother Larry is uh, all over this country preaching the gospel. He and his wife are traveling. He's an evangelist now, but he's still one of the greatest songwriters mm -hmm. that ever took a pen in hand. And so uh, we like his songs so much. He wrote a bunch of them, and we picked one out to sing on our new live record. And if he could... Uh, be here right now. He'd be ashamed. Yeah, he'd be saying, please don't do it that way. But we're fixing to do his song called Burning On. Here's how it goes. It was landed a fire, keep them burning to 
the bride who comes, it won't be long. Keep a bird in horn. Give me a lift with a heavenly fire. There'll be no place to borrow some. Keep a bird in horn. Keep a bird in horn. I'll slumber and steal, keep them burning on, keep them burning on. Get them away from with the hope of survival, take a little lamp and get them feel, keep them burning on, keep them burning on, keep them burning on, keep them burning on. And let them be a lamp until you meet till the morning dawn. Don't let there be one flicker right down, lest you find your lights on.
You know, we gotta go now. But we've had a great time with you tonight. And in spite of the weather... Yeah, it's been a real flood. It doesn't matter if it rained or not, does it? I got a feeling you're fixing to tell us why. Because we didn't come together. Just to talk about that weather. Or to show up all these fancy duds that we got on up here. You're right, this is from Sears and Roba. <laughs> and the cuffs out, too. <laughs> <I didn't know. laughs> from the ceiling to the floor. From this stage back to the door. I feel revival in the air. People keep reaching, so we just can't neglect to keep on preaching. Granny's old-fashioned cup of sand, I just love it. She is the good source of healing when the soul needed healing, and that old time feeling within. Hey, I got a feeling we're gonna be feeling that old time feeling again. Hold the glory of it, don't you just love it when the hallelujah beats again? Thank you. 